this dog. I thought it was real for a minute there. It smells like a, like ocean. He was waving to us. Who was? We were kind of hoping you were. <laughs> we heard that ferry, that old ferry. Let me get this It's right up there. It's the Millows. It's great. It's got an There's a lobster company. Uh, all the lobsters are excellent. The Millows are friends of mine. I like them. Okay. These people right here? Linden Nat. No, oh, there's the Millows. Yeah, he's got a piece of park there. And they don't charge you. Yeah. Linden Napkins. Linen table clothes, oh, Once you guys are up there, I'm going to put the rest of these folks on. Okay. It's only three miles from end to end, and one mile from water to water, so it's really easy to navigate and walk around, as I'm sure you're finding out already. But the first thing I'll point out to you folks, right over here on the right, is the storefronts, because that is where the water used to come up to 200 years ago. Wow. So, right where we are right now is all ocean, and once we started to get some momentum as a major port city, we decided that we needed to move really far out to our piers, so we put a bunch of landfill down over here, paved over it, and moved really far out there. But I'll point out this building right over here. This is the U.S. Custom House, so that's still in use as a courthouse to this day. But the pillars right out front, those illustrate the point I was just telling you about. Because ships would go right up to the pillars to pay their taxes, their tariffs, and any goods that they were carrying back 200 years ago. But if you folks have a free 15, 20 minutes, I definitely recommend walking down some of the piers. There's some really fun stuff out there, shops, restaurants, bars, and there's fishing on the ends of most of these piers, but not this one over here on the left. So this pier is where the Casco Bay Lines are, and those are the ferries that pull up and take people out to a whole bunch of the islands out in the bay. So from these ferries, you can get out to about seven or eight of the islands out in the bay. But there are actually a whole lot more than just those out in Casco Bay. So does anybody want to guess how many islands we have in total out there in Casco Bay? Twelve. Twelve? Okay, good guess. Anybody else want to throw one out? Thirty. Thirty. I'm liking the direction we're going in. Anybody else want to throw a guess right now? Twenty-five. Okay. Six hundred. Okay. All right, everybody stop. Um, it's 140 islands out there. Yep. So a bunch of islands out in Casco Bay. And I'll show you up here on map just to give you an idea of how big Casco Bay is. It's not really a fair question. But so this is Portland over here. And the islands stretch all the way to like Bar Harbor, which is a little bit off the map over here. So that's just past the train station. We can see some of those cars right over uh, the valley over there. And that goes all the way around the bend. So you can still hop on the narrow gauge railroad to this day. That was functioning back when we were just getting our start as a main major port city here in Portland. So this area over here, Joy Hill, so that is named after an Englishman, George Lunjoy, who had a family farm that was pretty much spanning this whole entire hill right over here. And we're on the eastern side of the city now. So we're gonna pull over in just a sec and look out at the fog over here. This is usually where you have the best view of Casco Bay. 
so you, are, you all are definitely invited to come back and check out the awesome view from over here. So, yeah, nice to see it, it? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a reference point on the map over here. I still have the map of Casco Bay pulled up, which is a good thing. So we're over here, right about at the end of, um, of Portland over here, the peninsula. And so usually, we're able to see about six or seven islands right out here. And um, it's pretty much all you can see are these islands. So this is a big change in Gorgeous. So he was an Englishman. He uh, was a British soldier, but he never actually set foot in America. But he was such a good soldier that we just thought we gave our fort after him. It was part of a government project that had five identical forts all down the East Coast. The, the southernmost one. Let like the dock workers know they had to leave the bar, go unload the docks. So it was a really good means of communication. Helped us out quite a bit from 1807 onward. Up until the fire of 1866, that set us back quite significantly. So, look at that statue. So those kids' names are all etched into the base of the statue around back. To remember them by Neil Dow. So that's right over here. And it's this house with the green and the gold trim and the bricks. So Neil Dow, he was our mayor from 1851 to 1855, but he was better known as the father of prohibition here in Portland. So he made it illegal to possess or consume any alcohol back then. But he was also known for having really lavish parties where his friends and friends just all roam around him. And that was, as you might expect, no trip on it. That is the Adam Lincoln House. So that was the adventure of the penny postcard back in the early 1900s. In the 1910s, he was the mayor here in Portland. I'd love to see inside all these houses. Right? I'm sure they're really beautiful. I bet. All of these, yeah. And over here on the left, this is the view from the Western Promenade. Usually we can see all the way to the White Mountains over there on the distance. Yeah, you can usually see all the way to Mount Washington, but as of right now. So we can just barely see on the, on the uh, horizon there, and that factory over there looming in the distance, that's over in Westbrook. So that's pretty much the dividing line between Portland and Westbrook there. So you know, Westbrook, you know which this house went for about two years ago? Five million? Five million, good guess. Anybody else? 30. 30 million, okay. Good guess too. 15. 15. Nice. Good range there. So it's actually a bit less than all of those. It went for 2.7 million. That's cheap. It is cheap. And the reason it went for such a steal is because yeah, a lot of these homes over here on this stretch are really pretty. That's a really pretty thing. That's gorgeous. We are about to turn onto Boat Street over here. I still love to see it inside. <laughs> Over here, coming up on the corner, is going to be one of the only duplexes in the neighborhood. Beautiful. So right over here, this is uh, where they have, over on the left-hand side, squash courts on the inside of the home over here. And on this red house coming up over here on the left, we see blue placards next to the doors there. So those blue placards, those denote historical significance. So they do Victorian-style tea parties in July over here. People dressed up in crazy costumes, talking in funny accents. It's a great sight to see. I'm hoping I get invited this year. I love it. Over on the left here, this is the Western Cemetery. Not the Eastern Cemetery. This house coming up on my left, right over here. This slate shingle house right here. So the guy that lives here draws Batman for DC Comics. Oh, really? His folks were on the tour not too long ago, so I got to add that part back to them. But the reason they offered for slit shingles there was fireproofing. So we found out through trial and error that obviously uh, wood burns, but bricks burn too. They have little air pockets in them that cause it to explode. Not really hot enough. Causing a conflagration. A really hot, fast moving fire. So that's the reason that we also see a lot of stone houses over here. Over here on the right hand side though. So this is Wayne Fleet School. They do K through 12 over here, but this is where I went to high school. So they didn't seem to have a problem building with a ton of bricks over here. No. It's pretty much all brick in the, uh, the two blocks over here that take up the make up the school. But over here on the right hand side, that brick building right there, that is uh, the high school section. That used to be a nunnery in the early 1800s, mid 1800s, they converted that into the school right there. So out front, right over here, is where Bibi Buell and Steve Tyler used to pick up their daughter, Liv Tyler, right out front of the, the uh, school right over there. They would take her to Cape Cod about once a month to vacation over there. Nice. So other notable Portlanders I can tell you about. Uh, Who? The guy?
to see her. Janice. Have her. Have her get our picture. How's that tea?